I don't, did you, I don't know, like, do you, there, she's out there. You're the Florida version of Sex in the City, JD. That's when I was smoking my cigar. <laughs> Don't be an asshole today. Well, hello. Oh, hi. We're just waiting on JD because she's having trouble with the link. <laughs> no worries. Which is weird since you're here and she forwarded yes. to you. And she sends me the link every time. <laughs> I, I don't, we had this issue last week too, uh, or the last show we did, there was a problem, but whatever. So what do you, what do you, what are you drinking there? Uh, I am drinking this week's cocktail already. I didn't even wait. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's that good, huh? It is that good. Um, right. And it's one of those that you make in a large format. Um, well, so, summer's coming. <laughs> yes, this is this is the perfect one to bring out at the at the party. It's um, the perfect day because I feel like today was the day where we draw the line between. Yes. Oh, it's so nice and cool. It's a gorgeous day. Like it got hot. It got <laughs> hot. I wasn't <laughs> expecting it. The whole house heated up like a brick pizza oven. I was Ooh. like, I am not prepared for this. I thought I had another month. Oh yeah. my! So. We're due for uh, like a tank of summer, yes. some kind oh, of yeah. summer. This is this is a a, a very uh, very old traditioned uh, large format cocktail that I'm very excited for. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect because I'll tell you what, man my my backyard is the sweetest it's ever been. <laughs> oh. we, we really put some effort into it and. Um, we had our patio redone. We've got like new plants and wow. lights everywhere. And we even did like a little bonfire thing back Ooh. when it was cooler. Um, yeah. We did say this, it would be like such a good evening for, you know, like a, like a drink that you could just, you know, sit by the fire and, and drink away. And this sounds like that's what it's going to be. <laughs> oh, yes. That's oh. perfect. That's yes. perfect. It's just, you know, I was just watching a show. It's so dumb. I don't even know how we got hooked on it, but it's about people that make miniature things for Ooh. like little houses. Yeah. You know, so like doll houses, but this was like legit, man. Like it was this, it, it was just the most incredible stuff. They work with like clay and resin and wood and, and they just make the most amazing stuff like you like thank god it was on television because i don't think i would have believed it yeah that i just looked at these things and thought oh you know whatever but you you know watching them make it and everything mm -hmm. and this guy did this elizabethan banquet hall and i mean it was like insane oh. and there was this he even made like this stand with an old keg on it you know, like oh, and all, yeah. the, all the little foods and everything on the table. And the first thing oh. I said to Gemma was, oh my God, it's missing a tap. It's missing a, a thing. And she was like, they didn't have those back then. I was like, yeah. well, how'd they get the, the drink out of them? She goes, they just, they just tilted it. <laughs> That's why it's on this, this stand that looks like yeah. that X, you know? I was like, oh my yeah. God. So yeah, I was learning a lot about um, the old way of doing things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? So um, you um, have been gone for a while. Yes. <laughs> been I, gone for a while. I had a lot going on. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I have had a, a, a ton of just exciting, awesome things going on in life. We'll so, start with the, we'll start with the wedding because yeah. that's big. <laughs> yeah. So first off on St. Patrick's Day in Savannah, we had a wedding um, and we, we drug it out across three days. So we did, we did the, the wedding reception basically before the night before the wedding where normally the rehearsal dinner is we invited right, everybody right, out right. to yep. um we, we invited them all out uh basically to the salt marsh in a big pavilion and just through a massive like basically marina party 
had a big low country boil, which is a very like kind of traditional um, Savannah and low country thing. So, you know, just your typical boil, you've got um, shrimp, sausage, uh, potatoes, corn, as much spice as you can handle. So uh, we had a, we had a, you know, a good almost hundred people at that. Then we had the ceremony itself, which was very small, um, very quaint because uh, finding space on St. Patrick's day in the morning before the parade was quite a challenge. So <laughs> So it a very, I'm so uh, amazed that you guys pulled this off. Like, yes. I can remember uh, when this was in its inception, you know, when it was the idea and you were just explaining it. And I just kept thinking, was like, man, this is going to be hard to pull off. <laughs> yeah. And we, we did it all. We finished the uh, reception dinner the night before, go home, get three hours of sleep, wake up to uh, do the land rush where you basically are posted up outside of the square for two hours before you're allowed in and everybody runs in and grabs all of their prop, all of their land. And you get into little disputes at the corners of whose tent goes where oh, um, we did all of that and finished that just in time to run back, put our tuxes on and <laughs> get over, oh get over to the wedding in time. It's like being at a resort and trying to get your beach chair. Well, hello, JD. What the hell? I don't know what's happening. What the absolute hell? <laughs> I feel like you did something and Zoom doesn't like you. Zoom hates me. What did I do with Zoom? I don't know. You're too famous. <laughs> <laughs> don't I wish. <laughs> well, so this is a whole new gonna... setting. This is the, the a better setting. The lighting is fantastic. You like this? Yeah. Yes, right? That is awesome. This yeah. will be the new, the new thing. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So, so I'm going to come over to do this from now on because that just looks amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? I know so, I had the the best time when we were doing the shows from from JD's place like what a spread you know the setting right? was perfect the spread <laughs> yeah. was amazing Tyler was just telling us about um what it took to pull off this wedding oh oh my so so <laughs> I went I to you know a late night dinner party the night before waking up super early with friends and family to, to rush the square and, and fight for space to get our whole tailgate set up for after the wedding then our, some of our friends volunteered to not go to the wedding so they could watch the space. Oh, they could leave it, and lose it. Oh, yeah. um, so, so they're they're the true the true heroes of the weekend. <laughs> right. Then, some heroes don't wear capes. Yeah. <laughs> then we show up to the wedding just on time when the eight o'clock bells are ringing. Go oh, in, gosh. knock a ceremony out in twenty minutes. Knock a first toast, cake eating, everything out in about eight minutes because we had somewhere to be. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard that when you were walking back, you and Emily, you had the kids in the street that were like- Oh, like, so, so we're walking back and, and she's in her she's in her full wedding dress and just, you know, looking amazing. And I'm in my tux looking as good as I can next to it. And Aww. we start having little girls run up to her and like, want to like take flowers out of her, out of her bouquet. And we're taking pictures with them. <laughs> and then we need to cut through. So we just start- walking down the street because it's crowded. So I cut in and we're walking down the middle of the parade route and just thousands of people are standing and cheering and roaring oh, and just, wow. it was just like the dream wedding for wow. her. And just an amazing moment for me. Just people screaming like it was nobody's oh business. They've God. all been drinking since 4 a.m. So, so that is like so when you make see a noise. Them in Europe. When you see oh. them in Europe and they're walking through yes. the street. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was wild. Wow. And then- It's, just, it's incredible. Uh, then we started the party. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I honestly. And the party like, started. It's yes. like, you are right. It's like a, a three day event with uh, a couple hundred thousand of uh, perfect strangers. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so we, we made the news. We had a little news segment done. Um, I heard, I heard about oh, that. Yes. It was, it was oh, just, man. could not ask for a wilder day. Um, and then we we got a shotgun Red Bull vodkas and do keg stands. So I think it was very <laughs> <successful>. <laughs> what a, what a cool, cool memory that is yes. to have. That's yeah, awesome. that's gonna be great. That's one to tell the kids. <laughs> exactly. And and that actually is is where I decided um, to do this cocktail for for this month. Okay. Um, or I guess this quarter at this point. I've missed a few, but um, it's worth <laughs> okay. it's worth waiting a few months for. It'll it'll it'll. Need some recovery, but uh, we're worth to... waiting for Tyler. Oh, yeah. thank you. Um, yeah. This drink is definitely worth waiting for. He's um, already on it. He's already on it. This is what I love about it. Like this is how good <laughs> it is that he's already on it. I love yes. it. I know. Normally, normally I like to feature something before I. I, I didn't have time this this week. Right? I just needed to 
to get That's going. Fine. So, we were just, we were talking about uh, the old days, anyways. And if this if this is an artillery punch, <laughs> yes. And I feel like I'm I'm right in the zone, man. I'm right in. Oh, the zone. you are. Um, this <laughs> is. I finally got us on a on a gallery view. I don't know what you guys are seeing, but this is now you're down there. You're, gallery. you're okay. Yep. I'm seeing yes. Tyler down there. Okay, you're like, well, you're like Jan right now. You're like Jan. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple. I had some things done from the dermatologist this week, so that's why I don't have too much makeup on. And it's we're. It's cosmetic. totally okay. It's totally okay. <laughs> We're going to be drinking. Inspired. We're going to be drinking. We're going to be drinking. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Enough about me. Let's get back to your no. drink, Tyler. <laughs> so no, that's that's perfect. Uh, this is this is a punch, and the point of punches is Bible drinking. It's about conversation, about spending time with friends, um, mm -hmm. and having something to do that with. So this is a punch or a large format cocktail meant to be had at parties. Mm -hmm. uh, so even when I broke down the recipe, the my favorite recipe for this, which is called Chatham Artillery Punch um, from Chatham County, which is the county in which Savannah is. Um, and it's uh, this recipe I found, uh, the punch itself has stories back to the 1700s. Um, the recipe, yes, yeah, we're talking hundreds of years ago and it's still still rearing its head and, and causing awesome. beautiful times and bad hangovers. But, uh, <laughs> So the recipe that I found is, is supposedly translated from a, a handwritten note. Um, I'm going to, to believe that and choose to believe that. And it starts with a eight gallon batch. Eight gallons. Wow. Yes. I'm just so, picturing eight gallons, you know, gallons of milk lined up on my uh, right? yes. counter. Holy yeah. crap. This is, okay. this is not for a small party usually. This is <laughs> okay. for a big gathering. <laughs> It's for um, like your wedding, another yes. wedding. <laughs> yeah, so we did, for, for my wedding, I, I doubled this. So I had a 16 gallon batch and we got through just about every last drop. Oh my God. On top of everything else. Oh so, my God. Yes. I don't, um, even, I don't even know that many people over here that would be able to polish right? just eight gallons. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, well, there are, there are lots of, uh, of uh, single serving friends there that, you get to meet and share and have fun. So, <laughs> well, it is the Queen's Jubilee coming up. So, you oh, that's a good it? chance to do it. Oh, wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, one of the challenges with this one is taking the units of gallons when it comes to ingredients, you know, one and a half gallons, uh, a half gallon of things, and breaking those down into, into proportions that actually work in a single serving cocktail. Um, a normal party. Yeah. So, <laughs> it turns out for a single serving cocktail, you just can't do it. The units are too small. They're annoying to measure. You're, you're spending a lot of time. So uh, for this one, I, I decided to do a, a batch of five. So comes out to about 12 ounces before we add the champagne. Okay. And then you can think, well, all right. Okay. I can so do How it. many people yeah. could we have at this party for this? this I would say this, this would be good for like that first entertaining of a group of, of six to eight. Okay. okay. That's yeah, normal. It's just going to be your kind of your welcoming cocktail, mm -hmm. um, as I like to call it. Just something kind of you know a, a good a good frozen pitcher's worth of of, of drink. Nice, nice. So, <laughs> um, perfect. Again, a lot of these ingredients would be blown up, and there'd be a little bit of different proportions. But uh, breaking that down and then running through a couple trials to figure out what kind of makes a good single serving, or kind of I'm calling it a single serving, because if you're going from a uh, eight gallons to about 12 ounces. I'm going to say you're at a single serving portion of that. <laughs> right. um, and, and I will say this is, this is a classic punch. This is a tr traditional punch. So generally uh, chilling would be uh, moderate at best. So <laughs> right, uh, right. I'm going to modify it. Yeah. Generally you would add water to these to dilute them down um, because you would not always have access to ice. Ice would have been an extreme luxury um, and very difficult to get if you could get it at all. Um, so they would normally just let things rest overnight to kind of marry, and then they'd add water to the loot, and then kind of you get your mouth sensation that you would sometimes get from that chilling from actually adding the sparkling wine, champagne, whatever that would be. Oh, cool. Um, okay. So I cheated and used ice in this one uh, when I served it. <laughs> but <laughs> it's sounding good or get started. Like I want. Again, this is all going to be go together, and I'm just going to let it marry. So I just start with a nice decanter. Nice. Um, okay. This is a wedding gift from we one didn't of my do friends. This for a gentleman Jack episode, this feels like it would be that era. Oh yes, you're yeah, okay. still still right in the perfect timeline. Okay. So um, to start, I'm going to begin with just wine, and it would call for Catawba wine traditionally, which would be an, an American varietal of grape. Uh, 
whenever something calls for Catawba wine, especially when I'm doing punches and not doing anything, does, I just look for whatever says sweet red wine. Sweet red wine, okay. So, so this Alrighty. one was just the first one I saw that said sweet red wine. They usually hold exactly what you want to do and they kind of kind of make it. So for this batch, I'm going to do 2.25 ounces of sweet red wine. I've cheated and already put my uh, basically two teaspoons of brown sugar in there. I'll let that dissolve as I build it. Brown sugar. Brown sugar. Sweet wine. Okay. It's sounding like songs, right? Brown sugar, sweet <laughs> red, red wine. Was <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you could, you should come out of this with a hit single, JD. Yeah, you yes. can get some ACDC whiskey gin and brandy out of this one. There yeah, you go. Yeah. So that's 2.25 ounces of the sweet red wine. Next is going to be 2.25 ounces of strong tea. So I, whenever something calls for strong tea, I like to go black tea. And I basically like to go by volume one to one. So I did okay. four ounces of volume of black tea and four ounces of water, right at boiling, and then let that sit until you remember that it exists. So <laughs> longer than me. Yeah. So we're going to go to something Gemma brewed after dinner. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be potent. It's going to be bitter. Again, this is where you're going to get your bitter elements from that drink. So again, 2.25 of that one. There we go. Wow. Ah. All right. And I did write this one down because I have so many ingredients. <laughs> next up, we're going to go, next up, we're going to go with rum. Um, for this rum, I did all of these. I tried to source as locally as possible. So this is going to be a river set rum from okay. uh, the Blue Note River Set Distillery. Uh, they made one batch of this ever. They acquired wow. some rum from somebody wow. and they wow. aged it in their river set rye barrels, which is going to be another ingredient that we have. So this is a uh, barrel number 10 of batch one of one. And they'll never make it again. Oh, it was just a really wow. unique kind of opportunity that they had. And I was How able to source it that? through. Uh, this is a uh, generously sourced through Eight and Sam, the bar. We got, we got oh, a, good, awesome. uh, a good few cases of it worked it out. I was able to purchase some um, specifically for this cocktail. But the key here is that it's going to be kind of a, a light aged rum. So you want a little bit, I think a Jamaican rum usually does very well with these um, more than just a dark rum. And then this one's at a 66.3%. So it's a boozy rum. Very okay. boozy rum. Okay. <laughs> so for this one, we're going to do 0.75 ounces of the rum. I like the wedding band in the in the mix. Oh, of thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna brag a little bit. I like it. It's square. Oh wow! wow. Oh wow! So it just it just fits really nicely on on the finger. Wow. Um, it kind of gets something to rest against, and very pleased. So that was. You <laughs> have a square wedding. Yeah, of course. Why would I of course, think? right? Yeah, other than that. Of course. <laughs> um, next up, I'm going to use the Old Dominic Distillery Gin which is a locally produced gin by the Old Dominic Distillery here in Memphis. Um, and I like it. It's, it's not super piney. It's definitely like an American gin versus uh, kind of a, a London dry or a Plymouth style. Yeah. But it's going to be something perfect for exactly what we're doing. And that's going to be 0. 0.375 ounces. Wow. <laughs> so basically a quarter and a half. Okay. <laughs> go up or down a little. It's not going to ruin anything. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, rye, which is the River Set rye. Um, again, oh locally produced in Memphis, and it is the rye barrels that the River Set rum was rested in. Wow. So it kind of ties oh. all of that together. We just come full circle. Okay. There it is. So that's a half ounce of rye. Then we're going to add um, brandy is what it would call for. Um, typically when there is brandy, depending on the event, you would either be using a cognac or armagnac, or you would be using an American made brandy. However, most American brandies would have been, uh, Applejack, et cetera. Um, there wasn't a huge, uh, wine industry in the U S. So usually that would have been imported. That would have been why you'd save this for parties, something like that. So, uh, I was fortunate enough at my local liquor store to pick up a bottle of armagnac called, uh, Lancada. Oh, wow. And okay. I'll show you this particular bottle was uh, distilled in 1999. Oh. So this is, okay. this, uh, this, or this Armagnac is old enough to drink itself. <laughs> that, that's not <laughs> it's aged. <laughs> yes, it's been, it's been very well aged. And again, that's gonna be 0.375, so kind of just shy of a half ounce again. From there, uh, I've got all of my, I do write this down because there's a ton. We're not even close to done. So the recipe calls for Benedictine. Um, currently with supply issues in the US, Benedictine oh. is very difficult to get. 
Wow. But you're kind of going for a very herbal, a little bit of honey, everything. So I'm going to sub in a little bit of green chartreuse. Um, it okay. is going to be less honey and a little bit more kind of bitter herbs, but I like the way it comes out. And for this, when you're scaling it down this far, normally in the eight gallon batch, it would call for half a pint. So a very small <laughs> amount. So I'm just going to do basically an okay. eyeball of a dash or yeah. two. Okay. So Benedictine is what does that taste like? Because I remember that from years ago. The Benedictine, uh, Benedictine is going to really so it's it's a brandy based liqueur. Yeah. Uh, primary what flavors are going to be more? like herbs. Think of like rosemary, sage, mm -hmm. a little bit of uh, bay leaf, like kind of light herbs, and then a strong flavor of honey. Okay, that's a blast yeah. from the past. I forgot right. yes. Benedictine. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought we always associated it with. Uh, like medicine-y right you know, it's yeah, right. like old-fashioned medicine you know? yes <laughs> yeah exactly. so yes yeah, so you are going to get that heat from the the heat from the brandy but you do get like kind of like again i you know like bitter herbs like lots mm -hmm. of rosemary a little bit of thyme and then honey so chartreuse is going to be less of the honey and more of the herbs or green chartreuse yellow chartreuse would also work perfectly in this in this sub um then we're going to go for uh a half gallon of maraschino cherries. And those would have been like the dark red cherries. That you would have yeah. The um, star of the cherry temple. <laughs> yes. yes. So um, from a half gallon, it gets down to about uh, three quarters of an ounce. And instead of using uh, cherries themselves, I wanted to use uh, Emily in one of her wine ventures got me a, an actual bottle of uh, creme de cassis, which is going to be kind of a grape liqueur they would make um, from those grapes. So it's at about 20%, so it adds a little bit more heat to it, but it does still capture, you know, when you think about maraschino cherries, not the obnoxious neon red ones, but really the cherry itself, they're right. gonna have like kind of a sour and bitter flavor to them. And creme de cassis kind of ma matches that up. So I'm gonna use 0.75 ounces of my creme de cassis. Look how, big, look how dark that was. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Evolved recipe. No wonder Absolutely. what you had to write it down. Oh, yeah. This is fun. Then we get into our citrus finally. <laughs> He's like the mad professor over there. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Having a blast. So now we go into a half ounce each of orange and lemon. Look at that. Look at oh, that. He's going, he's going old traction tool. Of course, I'm going to hand juice my citrus for this one. <laughs> Because there's no other way to do it. <laughs> the, I'm just thinking, like, I don't even have orange juice in the fridge right now. <laughs> I love the way he's got everything prepped, you know. Yeah. Like, well, like, this I think you, you know? this has got to take up your entire counter. I'm thinking. Oh, right. oh yes. I, I, I guess I should, um, just for the comedy's sake, show you what what the space off camera looks like. When this <laughs> <is over with. laughs> The shelf at the liquor store, I'm guessing. <laughs> Absolutely. So there's my half ounce of orange juice. Now I'm going to do a half ounce of lemon juice. Tyler, I got to wonder if you get like um, special treatment at your liquor store. Like, oh, they, they, you they are hard for uh, that or. <laughs> no, it is, it is fun, especially Joe's, which is one of the ones I really prefer to frequent. They've got a really fun staff. It's Joe's Liquor uh, or Joe Wine and Spirits in uh, Memphis. And their staff is fantastic. They're extremely well trained. Every time I go in for a party or anything, I get to walk in and just go, okay, I have to impress somebody. Help. <laughs> What's something that I don't know about that you can tell me all about? <laughs> oh my God, that's fantastic. Yes. So then you just get it all mixed up to dissolve the sugar. Mm. There's, I, that's right, there's brown sugar in there way yeah. back when. Way, way At back, the bottom. Then, you know, nine <laughs> ingredients ago. I think brown sugar and orange goes so good. Oh, yeah. 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 That would be like maybe a Grand Marnier. Yeah. You know, everybody about? goes right to apple and I'm like, no. Right. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, this is, this is amazing. So again, color wise, we've got kind of a dark. I red, can't believe that all those out. things and that's what it, and that's what it's made. Right. Right. Me too. And when you smell it, it just smells like I'm I'm gonna be honest, like if you just blended a cherry pie and an mm -hmm. apple pie together, just wow. amazing. It's it's fruity wow. and cinnamony and strong <laughs> and strong, good alcohol. I, by still, I just can't believe that there's wine in this. Yes. 
I was so at like Long Island iced tea. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're you're not very far off. <laughs> See, this this is Excellent. the kind of drink that tastes good going down. You drink, yes. you drink so yeah. many of them. Yeah, you know, and you're much. hammered. You're absolutely hammered. <laughs> Look at that! Wow, We're still not done. Oh, oh, oh it's not right. it's not a punch until you've added. Something fizzy. A bit of sparkling water. Something fizzy. Oh, wow, look at oh, that. Man. Wow. And that's that your garnish. Wow, it's time for the applause. Yeah, that looks amazing. Oh, wow. Cool. Almost oh, could that's... taste it through the screen. I know. I'm just thinking of all those flavors. It's so layered and complex. Oh. How did old people oh. think about that? Right. I don't know. I think I, I'm convinced that that things like this. So like the story of this one is the first time that it was made. Um, George Washington had come down to to the state of Georgia and was in Savannah to, to do just one of his, you know, military parades and mm -hmm. that to celebrate the, the Chatham artillery group threw together their punch and shared it with everybody and that uh, George Washington's hangover the next day was so horrible that he refused to ever go back to the state. <laughs> <laughs> That's I thought, like, an awesome that story. That's an awesome story. <laughs> it felt like that this Sunday morning. We went yes. to the hard rock. <laughs> I had way too many Jack Daniels. I'm out of practice. And it was like, yes. was feeling oh, it the next day. I just told Tyler, today was, the, today was the line between, oh my God, the weather is so gorgeous. To, it's hot. It's hot. <laughs> oh, I can't oh, believe okay. it. I wasn't expecting it. Uh-oh. That starts so, the summer, huh? Yeah, here we go. Here we Rosie. go. <laughs> I didn't, I just, I just didn't, it wasn't bad until like two o'clock. And I was like, what happened? <laughs> the sun just <laughs> never stopped beating on the house. And I was like, you know, I, I, I just wasn't prepared. I was going to be cooking something in the oven. And that's like oh, a huge no on a hot day. Yeah, right? <laughs> but I had no other, I'm like, oh my God, I'm contributing to it now. <laughs> It was, it was awful. And I just, I just said to him, our backyard is looking like stellar. Mm -hmm. I'm so ready to just like sit out there in the evenings when it drops back down to like right. 50, 55 or whatever to light that our little bonfire thingy with like a really good drink. You yeah. Know, that's like it doesn't have to be a summer, yes. it doesn't have to be a summery kind of drink, like just a mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. drink that goes with like the, the bonfire smoke you know well that that drink you just made tyler yeah. sounds really good for the summer it's it, just like i like you just have to have it like i feel like i need to start going out and get all getting all those ingredients and making that it listen to horrible. you that you don't even have mixers in your house <laughs> i know there's no mixers in this this would be the easiest one for certain people to make <laughs> that's true that's absolutely that's true. true the mixer yeah. is wine and tea yeah. yeah, all you need is tea, wine, yeah. rum, that was pretty pathetic. <laughs> this is that perfect is, for me. Perfect. It feels Britishy though. Mm -hmm. Like there's something about it that maybe it's just yeah. because it's all that's ever on TV here is stuff like old shit. You know, like <laughs> it, 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 it is inherently it's 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 a punch, and punches really were made into strong existence by by. I mean, I don't want to say the Britons because that's always wrong, but like by the uh, the English Empire, like it truly was. Yeah. yeah, they they were the first ones to have access to all of the ingredients simultaneously of kind of your oh, oh that's your cool rums, your whiskeys, <laughs> all of your citrus, the spices that would normally go into it. Um, I feel like they wear they would wear that badge of honor proudly. <laughs> yes, oh, they, <laughs> that's my take on on how yeah. they drink over here. I mean, man, no, it is. It, I, it's can't, truly, I can't keep up. <laughs> I can't keep up. Something but it's you free. Would make at, at your bar, or would, would this be far too much time to do that? No, not at all. Um, what we would what we would do at the bar is, for example, we're coming into summer season. Uh, we just got a full bar for the patio. So one of the things that I'm working with a couple of our of our patio bartenders um, is every let's say Wednesday or Friday for kind of a happy hour, you would serve a large format. Oh, okay. Um, you yeah. would make a large yeah. format and say it's. Yeah. You know, here's our basically happy hour special. Is it's this price till it's gone? Mm -hmm. and oh, that's, would, that's, a, that's like a cool that. idea. So, so that's where a lot of these punches and things come in. They they were always big for kind of like outdoor parties, garden parties, things like that. Yeah, yeah, right. so yeah. 
So I'm thinking you would act, you would have to have like a big thing of it pre-made, which is great because yes. that seems to yes. be the, the, the right way to go with something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And then, um, oh yeah, your patio dwellers would totally mm-hmm. wow, I could do see. that. Just sit out there at some uh, trendy yeah. pool. Yeah. On yeah. a summer evening with the Edison light bulbs that are mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I always <laughs> wanted to go to a party with those garden party lights around. Yes. Jay, yeah. you can get them for like eight bucks on Amazon. <laughs> I used to have them at my house. I had like a, a pergola. I had to think of what you called it, you know? Yeah. Do you think I was ever out there? No. <laughs> Did I ever do that? No. Um, uh, but you, could put them on, you could put them like right out on your patio. I'm thinking of that. I think I might want to do that. I mean, they- I'm, in, I'm, I'm in total like backyard light fiend this year. Yeah. Like, I've got... Yellow and blue for Ukraine <laughs> uh, <laughs> on the fences. And then I've awesome. got stars, all different color stars. Uh, and then I've got all these little flower pots that hang on the fence, mm-hmm. to match the stars. And then so you could do that. You have your garden. Yeah, my gardener guy um, that, that, that did our patio, he planted uh, these creepy crawlers, you know, that grow up climbers, oh, yeah. I think he called them. So then he like put all this wire like all over my fence so that all the plants will grow up the wire. And he goes, in about a year, this will really fill in. And I'm like, oh man, like I don't want to wait. It's already filling in. I bet. A yeah. year? Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> They're growing. And now I have like the hanging plants coming out of the basket. So we don't have to look at the ugly old fence anymore. It's all, and, and then we got some uh, like geckos like real funky geckos to hang also on the wires. He said like the more sparkly lighty things will will keep like birds and the squirrels and all that um, oh. away from destroying it. So uh, I just took that advice and ran with it. <laughs> you have a great backyard. Your backyard I is junk this baby up to uh, you know <laughs> well I had I had guests too so I wanted it looking like perfect because I had Jill Bennett and Lauren. We LA girl. yeah <laughs> and uh they got to see it once and then they i mean they i'm honestly these are the kind of guests that you want that like you spend the day that they get in you know yeah. that afternoon you have a little something to eat when they get in from the airport and then everybody's always like knackered and shattered so they go take a nap and then they come down and they're ready for a light dinner and then they go to bed early right, right. So that's right. your visiting time and then you only see them in the morning for coffee and they're out the door and they don't come back until like late at night. And I'm like, <laughs> these are the kind of guests I live for. I don't have to, <laughs> them. I don't have to cook for them. <laughs> I don't have to be the one taking them into town. They had train schedules, pre-bought tickets. Ooh. They had an itinerary. They did a 12 hour tour. Oh. What? 12 hour. Wow. Where did they go? Tour. What, what were they touring? And they went Probably Windsor Castle, London. Windsor Castle, then all the way to Stonehenge, and wow. then back to London. I think wow. um, so. All the all the the key points, but Stonehenge, you know, like that. I remember this is before they built a, a second road, so it's probably a little bit easier to get to. But it took us like I don't know something like four or five hours to get to Stonehenge because there was only yeah. one way in and one way out. You also have your people that are trying to get to Salisbury. So it's just, a, you know, between tourists and locals and everything jamming up one road, it was brutal. So, um, yeah, I just remember it taking forever. But now I guess, you know, they probably like have uh, now they have a, a, the second road. That's where the tour buses and stuff are going. And the residents are like flying home, <laughs> <laughs> not stuck behind a bus. Yeah, for an hour, like, so. uh, we live yeah. here, people. That's how I feel here. I'm like. These people don't realize some of us live here and we want to get home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now's home. the time that all the two, like all your, uh, your, your snowbirds are going back mm-hmm. because they can handle right. you know, summer. Mm-hmm. So right. this is where right. everything just quiets down a little bit. Like this was, even though it was summer and it was roasting and it was like, it, you know, like the heat was unbearable. It was still nice to be able to get where you were going without having to, you know, worry about the tourist traffic. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You, that's that's that was a good. That's a good thing. <laughs> it was a good thing. Getting to so, work on time. Hey. Oh yeah, that's for sure. 
So Ty, so you, are you are how are how is married life? How are you are you going planning on leave, going back to Savannah or yes. what is um, I don't know if your plans are like secret or no no there's there's no <laughs> secret it's all it's all been very very well uh, explained so um, yeah uh, married life has been amazing it's just been uh, fun and blissful. Um, I also like to say like that the coolest that a, couple. I don't mean to interrupt yeah. you, but oh no, that's no, it is. Um, but but when most people ask, I like to say that that I feel a a great burden of obligation or responsibility upon my hand. But mm. uh, no, it's been it's been fantastic. You're a it's husband a and a provider now. Yes, yes. Now I have now I have true responsibility. Um, <laughs> right. But uh, but no, and then we are planning uh, hopefully near the end of near the end of summer to move back to Savannah. Um, oh, get close to family, wow. and I'm oh. going to transition into uh, working in in the service industry full time, and and seeing oh. where that takes me. Um, really? I know some oh, cool. very cool folks out there. Oh, um, you'll be even right closer. Through. You'll be even closer yeah. to, to your yeah. to your family. Yeah, that's yes. fantastic. So, so it's been so fun doing this for the last few years, and uh, I have uh, done a soft resignation for my engineering job. Um, I'm still there part time to to help the button up some things, but uh, I am I'm moving into into the service industry full time and seeing where that's going to take me, and uh, I'm wow. very excited for that. So that's been another huge. You know, nowadays, change. like people like bartenders and stuff are literal rock stars with their oh, yeah. Instagram pages, and I still would love to get that girl from Italy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, Fred yes. Reese or something. Oh, absolutely. Oh, but I think she, I think she speaks like um, mostly Italian. So I don't know how that interview would go. We can barely <laughs> handle Birmingham, so <laughs> I can't. I'm not quite sure. All right, so well, listen, I, that was awesome. We got two minutes. Go, Jay. Oh, go. I was just gonna say, if I feel like having when you move there, feel like having you make me a drink. It's a mere eight hours drive. Yes. <laughs> so I can come up there, spend the weekend. Maybe we could do a show from up there. Have Tyler make us a drink. Since that would he's be really a, cool. A famous mixologist, you should, I feel it coming. So we you should know. definitely do that. That would mm -hmm. be a lot of fun. Um, Tyler, will awesome. you spend like holidays and stuff like in Florida or with your parents? Um, do they they go to you? So so my parents, uh, you know, oddly enough, since they're already living the the retiree's dream, uh, tend to want to leave Florida as often as possible. That I see. <laughs> I have <laughs> so, up i never know when judy's in town i never know like what's going on like i'm like are you here are you not here well, i'm just i'm saying it because Gemma and i are going to be there for thanksgiving so i thought mm -hmm. that that would be amazing well well hold on if there's if there's a, another motivator i could make that happen so All right. <laughs> just put it in your books <laughs> yes. um my parents tend to take their their annual vacation over thanksgiving it's been a tradition of theirs since i've uh graduated college so their house will be open so i'll be there <laughs> oh, even better yeah. even yeah. better that's oh. awesome all right guys this has been fantastic tyler thank you so much thank for the you. time and effort you put oh, into that God. one back. oh yeah this was this was a blast thank you yeah. for letting me do this now you're back in the rotation don't forget yeah. i'm ready okay. i've already got june down so we're yeah we're gonna make it happen. there you go all right guys enjoy that too man <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, never stop chasing your dreams. Uh -huh. there, that's <laughs> see? <laughs> see? <laughs> we drank way too much whiskey.